All right, today I will talk about uh, restriction and Mackey's irreducibility criterion for the irreduce, uh, for uh, induced representations. So let's begin with a finite group G uh, with two subgroups H and K. And suppose that uh, theta is a finite dimensional complex representation of uh, H and uh, and uh, then we consider the representation induced by theta, which we conventionally denote uh, by this. Uh, so, yeah. <coughs> and uh, V is the vector space of the induced represent uh, the representation induced by theta. So to, we, were, we shall determine the restriction of the uh, in, uh, representation induced from the represent from the representation theta of H, uh, we shall consider the restriction of the in, uh, induced representation to the subgroup K. Okay. So for that, let's uh, first recall a general group uh, fact from group action. So uh, uh, for any two subgroups uh, H and K, so G mod H is a set of all left cosets and G acts on that by left uh, multiplication we can restrict that action uh, to K. So therefore K acts on G modulo H by left multiplication. So now we we'll fix any H. So SH is a co is a member in G modulo H. And we, we, we shall look for the stabilizer of uh, S, S, the stabilizer of uh, SH in K. So this is my action and I'm considering the stabilizer of the point SH under, the, in the, under this action. And then it is very easy to see that uh, this uh, becomes exactly this because uh, if X belongs to K such that X A X S H is S H, then that forces that uh, X has to be in S H S inverse. So uh, <clears throat> this is what we have. And uh, then uh, for any S H, the orbit of S H is uh, K, uh, is this. So this is nothing but uh, set of all uh, cosets of the form small k, small s, uh, small k, small s, and H, where small k runs over all elements in capital K. So this is the orbit of S H, and by orbit stabilizer formula, the uh, uh, the order of the orbit is basically the order of the quotient by the stabilizer, which is this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> again, let me recall for you. So, this is our ASH, and uh, we have, uh, and whenever uh, we have a representation uh, theta uh, of H on these vectors, on the complex vector space W. Then from that we can we get a representation uh, a representation of uh, the subgroup H S for any S in G, and we denote the representation by theta S. So theta S of X is theta of S inverse X S. So this is just a, uh, this is just first we do a conjugation and then we apply theta. So remember X is in S H S S inverse. So therefore S inverse X S lies in X. So therefore, this makes sense. And since theta is a homomorphism, from that it follows that this is also a homomorphism. Um, okay. So uh, theta S is a representation of the group uh, of the subgroup uh, HS, uh, subgroup of K on the space W. Uh, note that uh, we we all we started uh, since we have started with a representation uh, theta of H on W. So now we have two representations on the same space W, but the groups are different. Hence the representations are different. In one case, the group is uh, uh, H and in the other case, the group is HS. Uh, so so <coughs> since uh, uh, for the simplicity in notation, sometimes uh, or in fact quite often, whenever we, uh, when we uh, talk about our representations, we quite often just write the space itself. Uh, and uh, so this is just a convention that uh, uh, for simplicity in notation, many times we just write down the space of representation itself. 
So if uh, you see, so if uh, uh, we do that by using the same sign W for both the representations, it will be uh, it will be quite confusing. So keeping that in mind, what we will do is uh, we whenever we will talk about uh, uh, theta s, not theta. Then when we talk about theta s, then for for the uh, when we talk about we are talking about theta s, then instead of writing w, we shall rather write w s for w. So again, let me tell you, w s is nothing but w. For the w s sign, we will use whenever we will be considering the representation theta s. Otherwise, when we will consider theta, then we will write simply w. Again, let me repeat. This is what we do because quite often uh, uh, we just write the space of the representation instead of uh, the homomorphism, right? Just this is this is what we do for notational simplicity. So if we uh, do that here, then it will be a confusion because W S because the, the the space is W for both of them. So then uh, so keeping that in mind in order to make a distinction between them. So this is what, uh, this is the convention that we have adopted that uh, whenever we, uh, we need to talk about this, this theta s, uh, then we should, then we shall write w s. So w s is nothing but w, but this is just two. Uh, so the, the w s is nothing but w, so but the symbol will be used just to remind ourselves that now the representation under consideration is theta s, not theta. I hope this is now clear to you. Okay, next we set up, uh, we fix a set of representatives such that the orbits of the set of representatives such that uh, um, if I take s from a, s from s, the orbits of s h under the action of k that forms a partition of uh, uh, g modulo h. This is what this is what we uh, we certain we do have uh, for for sure because under the action we know that uh, this is uh, uh, the orbits for the partition of the whole space. Now we have a partition of G modulo h, and from G to G modulo h we have a quotient map. So basically, if we pull that partition back in uh, G, uh, then uh, the, a, a typical orbit like this will be once we pull it back inside G, it will be this. So for starting from a partition here, if we pull it back by the onto map, we get a partition of G like this. So these objects we will, uh, so if, if K would not be there, uh, then we, uh, if K would not be there, then it would be just uh, a usual left coset. But now here on the left, you have a K. So from these objects have a name and uh, the name in nomenclature is very natural. We will rather call it a double coset, okay? Okay, let's go ahead. Yeah, so this is the main theorem that we will uh, prove now. So as I said that we want to determine uh, wh what happens to the India to the in when the what happens to the induced representation when it is restricted to K. So we will now show we to, we, we now show that uh, so that is nothing but the direct sum of the induced representations W S. Remember, as I said that here the representation is the representation of Hs on W, which we denoted by uh, and the, the homomorphism we denoted by theta. So writing Ws here uh, is uh, relevant because we are considering the uh, representation theta s. Okay, so this is first we prove that which shows that what happens to the restriction, where, what happens to when the induced representation is restricted to K. For the proof, let us first uh, recall that since this, so that means V is the direct sum of translates of uh, W. So now what we do is since G mod H is the direct sum of uh, G mod H is the direct sum of uh, uh, these orbits when S runs over all elements in S. So therefore we can break this, uh, we, I mean, therefore we can uh, group the summands here in this way. That is, we first, to, for any S in S, we first consider this, the orbit of S in G modulo H, 
and for each point sigma lying on that orbit we consider omega sigma this is what we can do for what we can do for any s so thus the entire sum is basically the direct sum of these objects okay the direct sum of these objects for sim for simplicity we write this object by vs okay so therefore v is now the direct sum of vs okay uh, now let's uh, see that uh, suppose uh, let's recall that if p rho is the representation because so as i said that uh, uh, in the very beginning i assume that uh, in the very beginning we assume that uh, uh, the representation induced by theta uh, we uh, uh, so we as in the very beginning we started with the theta and then considered it's uh, the rep rep representation induced by that and this notation uh, is a uh, uh, simplified notation it just uh, shows that uh, the space of the representation is v so now uh, we since we need to uh, now since we need to talk about since we need the homomorphism that is the representation on v which is induced by theta so let's denote that by rho so because this is this is where we need the homomorphism from g to gl from g to glv so we need to fix a notation for that. So let uh, rho be the representation uh, on V, which is induced by theta. Then let's observe that for any sigma here. So what is W sigma? So since sigma lies here, so sigma takes the form like this, where K naught is in K and, uh, okay, where K naught is in K. So, uh, well, uh, here I forgot to mention that K naught is in K, but I think it's clear to you. So, since sigma is this, so therefore W sigma will be rho K naught S W. So, what does this show? This shows that now if for any K, if I look at the image of rho K of omega sigma, then uh, it, it is clear that it will be nothing but rho K K naught S uh, W and which is nothing but again according to our definition w suffix uh, k k naught s h so what we see that for, for any k once we apply the operator w sigma on that it just becomes so this is what uh, sigma is right so rho k w sigma is just uh, we see that w k sigma okay because since this is just sigma so rho k sigma is w k sigma and w k sigma is certainly in the in the orbit uh, so if uh, this is this is the orbit of sh so if sigma lies here then k sigma also lies uh, k sigma also lies here so therefore what it shows is vs is k invariant for any s i repeat we took a typical sum and here well, once we apply rho k on that for any k then we see that what we get is a uh, k sigma or what we get is omega k sigma sorry w k sigma so and uh, since, since sigma lies here so k sigma also lies here so from that it is quite clear that uh, this is just uh, so from that it is quite clear that this is just uh, uh, yeah so from that it is uh, clear that a typical rho sigma or a typical w sigma when applied uh, when applied uh, rho k on that, uh, yeah, so when uh, for a typical term say k sigma, when applied rho k on that, so it just goes to another uh, another sum and uh, in the same sum. That shows that the Vs is k invariant. Okay. Now let us make our main claim. We claim that for every s in s, uh, v s is this that is we what we want to what we claim is so we have the representation uh, we have the representation uh, uh, theta s of h s on w s uh, we, 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 we will show that uh, uh, since uh, the representation induced by this is nothing but the sub representation of uh, sub representation of the group k on uh, on sub representation uh, of, of the group K on uh, Vs. 
uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. So uh, basically, we have uh, we have the representation of uh, G on V that can be restricted to a representation of K on V. And since Vs is K invariant, so we, it is legitimate to talk about the sub representation of uh, uh, sub representation of that uh, sub representation of the restriction of uh, the restriction uh, to K on this Vs. And recall that according to the main, I mean, what we are supposed to prove in the theorem is uh, uh, this is isomorphic to this. Right, this is what we are supposed to prove, and uh, what we have just seen is uh, what we have just seen is already the v, the v is uh, already uh, the v, the v is already this. Okay, now if we show, if we can show that these are basically isomorphic, these are basically the representation. So, what we if we can show if we now show that the representation of k on, on v, the representation of k on this vs is nothing but the uh, representation uh, induced by ws then it it is then it becomes uh, then the conclusion becomes obvious that the representation of uh, the representation rest uh, uh, the representation of g restrict on v restricted to k uh, becomes the uh, direct sum of uh, the induced representations uh, by uh, each ws okay so we now uh, set we now establish that uh, for that what we have to see observe is uh, for any s in s uh, the sub representation of hs on v uh, sub representation H S on V S. Uh, just a minute. Huh. So I think there is some problem. Uh, v S is not defined. Uh, the just a minute. I have to just, I have to just check uh, uh, sub representation. Huh. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. So uh, basically. Uh, here there is the error is here i should have written as v of s okay because and say k has a represent so k has a representation on v of s so and since hs is a subgroup of k so we shall simply restrict that representation to hs and uh, uh, and uh, that is on uh, so this is so just uh, so uh, just uh, so let me first clarify so first of all uh, now it is quite clear to you that this is not v suffixes it will be v of x so we can restrict v of s on uh, the v we can restrict v of s on h s and uh, since uh, uh, and uh, since uh, uh, okay Okay, I think uh, I should. Uh, we we will show now is we will show now is though uh, inside in, in the so when we defined V S so V how was V S defined V S was defined as a sum V S was defined as a sum so in particular when uh, uh, when uh, sigma was just S H so uh, there then the sum and was W S H. We will now show that WSH is uh, uh, indeed uh, HS invariant. WHS is a W uh, uh, SH is HS invariant, and the sub representation of the rest uh, and the sub representation of this restriction is isomorphic to this. So let me explain why this is so. As I said that uh, we, we, we claim that uh, uh, Vs is induced by this. So in order to show that the sub representation so the representation of K on Vs is the indi representation induced by Ws. For that first what we have to do is we have to first show that uh, 
where, where uh, VS contains a HS invariant subspace such that that uh, there are, uh, such that uh, that subspace is HS invariant uh, such such that the subspace is HS isomorphic. Uh, what I mean by that is isomorphic as uh, representations of the group uh, HS. So that subspace is isomorphic to this uh, isomorphic to the representation of HS on WS. First, we have to prove that. And uh, what I am going to show is yes. So uh, the subspace that we have to the HS invariant subspace that we have to first find out from VS is precisely uh, this WSH. So why so? So let's see that first. So first we will see why this is actually uh, HS invariant. This is very clear because suppose X is in HS, then according to the definition, HS is just this. So according to, we just write down the definition. And since XS belongs to, XS belongs to uh, SH, so therefore uh, rho S, rho, when we applied rho X on that, uh, that exactly becomes rho, uh, rho S W. So that shows that the operator for every X in H is, uh, once we apply the operator rho X on this subspace, the image lies in that subspace itself. That shows that under F for every X in H is, uh, this subspace a this subspace uh, uh, WSH is uh, uh, invariant under uh, that and that is in other words so this subspace is HS invariant and now we have to show that uh, so uh, as I said that uh, the representation on of HS on WS which is denoted by theta X is isomorphic to the sub isomorphic to this uh, sub representation so we have to get a, a g invariant we have to get a hs invariant linear map right because here the acting the group under consideration is hs and this is quite clear uh, this is what the diagram is uh, so the uh, g invariant so so the uh, intertwining uh, upper intertwining linear bijective intertwining map or HS invariant linear map is the size precisely this rho s and uh, both the, these are clear because if you remember uh, this, uh, far theta s of x is basically rho uh, theta s of x is basically uh, rho uh, s inverse rho s inverse uh, x s so therefore, once we compose rho s with that, so we just get rho s x, uh, which is precisely this. I repeat, rho s compose rho s inverse x s. So therefore, what we ultimately get is rho s x, rho, rho x s, which is precisely the composition of these two. So that shows that uh, this representation uh, this representation of HS on WS is isomorphic to the representation, uh, isomorphic to the sub-representation of the restriction uh, to HS on the uh, space, sub-representation, yeah, on uh, this, uh, this WSH. Okay, so that part is over. Now what is left to us just to show that the direct sum part so that is what we have to show this okay and for that it is not also quite difficult because we have to see that uh, suppose x and y lie in k so these two subspaces are equivalent if according to definition if and only if this is what happens then that means uh, this is what happens so since x and y are in uh, x and y yeah, since x and y are in k, so y inverse x is also in k, so it's an element of k. Now what we just apply our previous observation that an element of uh, k, if it, ha if it makes this, then that must be in hs. So therefore here it follows that y inverse x lies in hx, or in other words, they have the same coset. So therefore it is now quite clear that in the orbit, so if you see, so here, uh, so this is the orbit of SH. So starting with the coset SH, 
we apply uh, we apply uh, elements of k one by one and once we apply that we see that uh, 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 they give different uh, such things uh, only when uh, we are getting uh, we are picking up elements from different cosets and uh, uh, from that it is now quite clear that uh, from that it is now quite clear that this sum is exactly this because uh, the uh, the uh, number of uh, because uh, the, the uh, uh, <coughs> choosing choosing different uh, choosing indeed different sigma from uh, this orbit is basic, basically corresponds to choosing uh, different uh, choosing different represent, choosing representatives of the uh, or, or in uh, choosing represent choosing yeah choosing different uh, sigma from the orbit is equivalent to choosing different cosets of k of hs in k so this uh, and uh, remember just uh, you should not get confused that uh, so how is this defined this is defined purely in terms of that way uh, from from a, uh, from any coset tau, we will pick up an element. So a typical coset, so a typical coset will look like here. A typical tau is look like some k times uh, some k times h s, and therefore uh, if it is some k small k times h s, so this guy is nothing but rho s. Uh, this guy is nothing but rho k applied on uh, rho s w. Uh, once you uh, once you recall the definition and uh, uh, keep in mind that to getting the so uh, taking the so uh, obtaining different sigma in the orbit of uh, this is same as obtaining and is same as choosing uh, different cosets here then uh, that uh, now then if you uh, remember these two things and put them together you see this equality easily holds okay so once that is done so we have now thus thus we have now proved that uh, uh, this uh, this induced representation part that is once uh, we so uh, again just let me recall repeat that uh, uh, v is a direct sum so v is direct sum of this each of these subspaces are k invariant Therefore, we can talk about the representation of K on each of them, and then we prove that each VS is nothing but the induced representation. Representations are induced by each WS, and once that is there, once the right hand side is just uh, right hand side is the direct sum of induced representations of K. Therefore, the restrict the so on the left hand side, if you restrict the representation to K. We get that uh, we get our desired conclusion. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead for that and uh, go ahead for that and uh, yeah. So yeah, so this is what we have. Ah, just a minute. So this is what we have uh, now proved. So let's go on. Ah, so. We, before we go ahead, we want to make a remark which is quite relevant here. That uh, suppose we have two s and L, two elements of G s and s prime, who, uh, which correspond to the same double coset. So that means both s h and s prime h. These two elements they have the same k orbit in G modulo h. Uh, then uh, Suppose I have uh, so if so happens, then since they have the same or they have the same orbit in the coset space G modulo H, so their stabilizer in K will be conjugate to each other. So this is one thing. So H S and H S prime will be conjugate to each other, and therefore we observe we make one observation V S is precisely this. We have just proved. And uh, again, the which is this, and again, since uh, k orbit of s h and under the action of k is same as the orbit of s prime h under the action of k, so therefore, uh, this is this, and uh, likewise, uh, uh, when we look at the things for s prime, so then this is exactly this, 
uh, uh, so because uh, <coughs> for any s that's what we we have uh, seen uh, so in particular for s prime so this is v s prime so same argument that we have uh, just seen so therefore what it shows is if s and s prime they have they are in the same orbit in g modulo h then what uh, what happens that this v s is same as uh, v s prime and hence from that we see that uh, the in the representations uh, induced by w s and w s prime are in fact isomorphic to each other i repeat so basically uh, the space v s and v s prime they just become the same if s and s prime are in the same orbit in the cosets in the set of all left cosets that is g modulo h so uh, but here uh, so since they are they are the same uh, and uh, they have uh, say this uh, they, uh, since they are the same and in fact they have this decomposition so from that it, it is now quite clear that uh, this uh, uh, the the the, I, the represent induced representation here is same as the induced representation there and that actually gives us something interesting that shows that this induced representation does not actually depend on the uh, depend on s uh, depend on s rather uh, up to isomorphism it depends on the double coset of s in g because if you take another element from the same double coset since they are in the same orbit in g modulo h and they, then there are representations induced by them will be isomorphic to each other so this fellow is not actually dependent on s rather it depends on uh, rather it depends on the double coset of uh, uh, s in g and from that one concludes that uh, uh, this that the direct sum of the re induced representations does not actually depend on the uh, on s which is the uh, prefix set of uh, prefix uh, complete set of representatives rather what happens that uh, e is, so this sum and uh, so this sum actually depends on uh, the elements of uh, here so well so let me first uh, tell you what that notation means so likewise g modulo h so this k uh, k uh, g and h that shows their set of all left cosets uh, set of all uh, double cosets of k and h k from left and h from right in the note uh, in the notation so now since we say that each of these terms does not actually depend on the choice of s rather it depends on the double coset of uh, a double coset of s so from that we can uh, we can immediately uh, we can um, from that we uh, we simply uh, since as i said that these they do each of these terms do not uh, do not depend on uh, the representative s rather uh, rather uh, up to isomorphism uh, it depends on the whole double coset of s so therefore uh, in view of that uh, from now onwards we, we shall simply write this uh, this is the direct sum of the induced representations the direct sum of the induced representations and uh, the and well let me let me just uh, tell you that how to interpret that so uh, here s is a double coset so for a double coset uh, s so uh, what this means is you have to choose a representative of the double coset and then accordingly uh, co accordingly co consider uh, consider uh, so once we have chosen a representative from the double coset accord then accordingly we will choose uh, the uh, we will construct this objects and uh, we have already seen that it does not matter what, what whichever whatever representative we have chosen from uh, whatever chosen for, we are we have chosen from a double coset so therefore uh, once we uh, keep that in mind that uh, the, the then, uh, then we are fine then we are absolutely fine with this formula let me again repeat what we have to so when s is a double coset so this guy just means that we have to uh, take a representative of the double coset s and then accordingly 
form uh, that uh, object and uh, there after isomorphism that doesn't it doesn't matter which representative we do choose so therefore uh, so here also after isomorphism things are quite fine all right so next we will go forward uh, for mackie's irreducibility criteria so basically what what we do is what we do is uh, we will consider a very special situation when uh, k is equal to h and in that case h is become just h intersects of s h s inverse which of obviously now becomes a subgroup of uh, h for and that holds for any s in g uh, then we have uh, so one so in this case so uh, since here h is uh, h is k so therefore now we have a uh, Two rep we have two representations of H S. One is of course theta S that we have seen uh, uh, earlier, and uh, since H S is a subgroup of H, so therefore we can restrict the representation of H on W to uh, H S. So we have these two representations. So it's very natural to ask whether they have whether they have any condition in general or not, or uh, in uh, good uh, say and in the and uh, when things are good so whether they have any relation between them in general so if we cannot see see something in the in full generality so the next natural question is in the uh, in good enough situations do we really have some relations between them so very shortly we will be say, we will be looking at the mackie's irreducibility criteria then we will see the there is a, a nice relation between them so before we state the Mackey's criterion, let's make a definition uh, for two finite dimensional representations of any finite group G, let's say uh, on V1 and on V2, V1 row 1 and V2 row 2 with characters chi 1 and chi 2 respectively. Uh, we denote the dimension of a set of all G invariant linear maps, so the dimension of the linear space of all uh, gene variant linear maps from V1 to V2 uh, by this and we have already seen in the last video that this is nothing but the inner product of the characters so from now onwards so we instead of this we use this notation and we should not forget that uh, this notation uh, so actually this means nothing but the uh, inner product of the characters Okay, so one uh, advantage for introducing this notation is in this notation the Frobenius reciprocity formula takes a relatively simpler form, which is precisely this, because from according to Frobenius reciprocity theorem formula, we have we are sub over here we consider on the dimension of the space of all uh, H invariant linear maps from W to the uh, W to res uh, W to E and here we consider all G invariant linear mass from uh, the representation induced by W to E. And Frobenius reciprocity theorem says that uh, the, uh, the, those two linear spaces are isomorphic, therefore, they will lead us to the same dimension. Okay, so once that is there, then what we have to do is if we have, well, we will make, we will make the definition, we will make the definition now. Uh, if uh, the inner, if uh, v1 v2 so here g is just to remind us that uh, uh, the group or, or whose representations are being considered so if this is zero then we say that the representations are disjoint and it is now easy to see that it is so say uh, has saying this is same as saying that uh, there is no irreducible irreducible uh, representation which occurs to both of them because if there would be any then that then when we consider the inner product uh, it uh, at least uh, <clears throat> when we consider the inner product then it would be certainly positive because uh, the number of occurrences of the representation is row in row one and the number of occurrences of that representation in row two we, uh, here both are positive and so we, we, they will be multiplied and yielding a positive number okay so therefore there is no irreducible representation that can that can occur in both of them uh, or in other words uh, they do not have any irreducible component in common so irreducible component means the irreducible sub representations because once we know that irreducible sub representations are unique up to 
uh, we, we have only for a finite group we have only uh, after isomorphism finite even irreducible representations and they and uh, uh, we <laughs> earlier uh, we uh, discuss what we mean by uh, when we say that uh, our irreducible representation occurs in another in any finite dimensional representation okay so now we shall state and prove the theorem of Mackey. So Mackey's theorem is about saying that when is a representation induced, when is an induced representation is going, when is it going to be, is a, when it is going to be irreducible. So the criteria says that it is irreducible if and only if the following two uh, properties hold. The property one is the uh, property one is the representation who which uh, which uh, so, prop, so property one says that uh, uh, the representation that we start with is itself irreducible and furthermore uh, theta s and the uh, uh, restriction of uh, theta on h s for every s not uh, non for every non identity s these representations must be disjoint okay so the proof is just a, a straightforward use of frobenius reciprocity formula let us first observe that uh, this uh, this is uh, become the so uh, since b is induced from uh, w so from frobenius reciprocity formula this just happens to be this and now we recall that uh, uh, from uh, what we have seen earlier that is when we uh, restrict the in, rep, induced representation to some subgroup K, then this is what we get, like this, uh, right? Uh, this is what we prove in generality that whenever we have a representation induced by another, rep, when we have a, an, another representation, then when you restrict the induced representation to some subgroup K, then what happens? So this is what we have. Uh, recall that uh, this notation means that the inner productive characters so the character here, uh, so the character here, here is basically the sum of the, these characters and then using the linearity of this, uh, linearity of uh, the inner harmony uh, of this inner product, uh, we simply get the uh, sum of the products of the characters of this and uh, uh, if some of the, sum of the inner products of characters of this and uh, each of them and again, which is nothing but saying uh, that this is this and uh, uh, there. So each, as I said, that uh, what we get here is the pro inner pro sum of the inner products of the character here with uh, each of this, each of the each of the characters of uh, uh, some and. And uh, once we do that, then this is what we get, right? This is what we get. And therefore, this is also now quite uh, ready. So here also we will use uh, uh, this uh, Frobenius reciprocity formula once again, and that just yields that uh, <coughs> this is this, uh, just direct application of Frobenius reciprocity formula. Now we just see that when A S is one, then H S is H, and also theta S is theta because theta S was just conjugation first we take the conjugation by s and then uh, do it but since s is identity so theta s is nothing but theta so therefore in the case when s is one this uh, this sum and nothing is nothing but so uh, when s is one so uh, hs is s so this is nothing but s this is nothing but the representation theta itself and here also it is theta itself so this is so then this becomes this so that is at least two, which is at least one so now you see that this sum and is basically, uh, so the, this is basically uh, a term which is at least one and there are other terms as well. Now recall that uh, uh, if, uh, if, v is a, if this is an irreducible representation, then this character and then the inner product of its character itself has to be one, there's an if and only if condition. So therefore this is irreducible if and only this is one. And now you see if it happens, so here we have already seen that uh, uh, in the right hand side one, there is one term which is at least one and there are other terms. Now if the, the left hand side becomes one, then it forces to happen that this term, uh, so the term which was at least one has to be exactly one and else everything else is zero. So that just uh, shows that uh, this is this and this 
and uh, exactly the first one means that uh, theta is irreducible uh, that is the condition a and this is uh, nothing but condition b so therefore the irreducible criterion of by due to mackey is uh, now over we will now finish uh, with a corollary so uh, as in the very special case that h is a normal subgroup uh, then the uh, representation induced by theta is irreducible if and only if first of all theta is itself irreducible and theta is not isomorphic to any theta s where s does not belong to h. So this is clear because when h is normal then h s is basically the intersection of h with the conjugation of h. So h s will be h itself. So for every s. Uh, so <coughs> So HS will be HS for every S, and when this when HS is S for uh, when HS is when H is normal, then it's also easy to see that uh, uh, theta S is irreducible. If theta is irreducible, let me just quickly show you, then you will understand. So the way theta S is defined is for follows. Uh, yeah, this is so. So uh, recall that if X runs over all elements in H, in the case uh, H is normal, then the, this also runs over all elements in H. So that shows that if there is an invariant, prop, uh, there is a, uh, some invariant sub, uh, subspace invariant under uh, theta S, then that has to be invariant under theta as well. So from here it is quite clear that uh, if theta is irreducible, uh, then theta S has to be reducible for uh, any S in G, uh, this, this is what we have to happen provided H is normal. So as uh, these two, as these two things uh, have, uh, these two things happen when H is normal, uh, then uh, this is uh, uh, obvious from uh, the Mac is irreducibility criteria. Okay, so I will just quickly summarize that first we have seen that uh, when we have uh, two groups, uh, when we have two subgroups, then with respect and while we have a representation of one of uh, them, then we induce it to the representation of G. And then what happens if we restrict that on the other group, other subgroup? So this is what we have uh, first uh, 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 explored. Then we have seen uh, that Mac is irreducibility criterion that says that when a representation induced by a representation is going to be irreducible. And the criteria says, if and this is if and only if the representation that we begin with has to be irreducible, and uh, uh, and the representation cannot be I cannot be the representation has to be disjoint with all of its conjugates, uh, where all of its conjugates theta s, uh, where s is not identity. Okay, I think with that I will stop.